Okay, first off, how are you doing, Miss Osa? Oh, I'm doing just great, and I'm so happy to be here. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy to have you here with us as well. And so um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions um, regarding your new off-Broadway show. A Hoodwink from Heaven, yes. A Hoodwink from Heaven, yes. And so basically, um, in, a, in a way, you know, what, what, what can we um, expect to see? Like, what, what are the songs? Like, you know, what memories do you think that you specifically put out here on the show to represent basically you know, your memory of your father and... and oh, well, my father had Alzheimer's, and uh, he was afraid he would forget me. So he asked me to write some country and pop songs that he could listen to before he moved on to heaven so that he could keep my memory alive in his heart and mind. He lives in Dallas, or he lived in Dallas, and I live up here in the New York area. And so my dad always wanted me to be a country and pop singer, but I'm a classically trained singer. So this was a little difficult for me. And I said, okay, well, I gave my word. And um, so what I did was I reached back into the family history with my colorful family members. And I remembered um, the occasions that were super important to my daddy and to me. And then what I did was I paired those memories with the types of music that my father enjoyed mm -hmm. so that that would sound familiar to him and in fact it did and he never forgot me so this is my journey with my dad um, right from the very beginning starting back with the great grandparents to the moment he moved on to heaven amazing. and beyond amazing oh, this is such a loving like heartwarming story I, I really loved it like from the beginning like when I when I when I heard about your play and basically everything that it entails, like it, it definitely hit home, like really, really lovely, wonderful, very lovely, and um, so um, and as well, you have been, you know, singing. You're your writer. You know, how did you realize that singing was your dream career? Oh, I came out of the womb that way. So I started singing professionally when I was eight years old, uh, from a teacher in my, my elementary school. And she said, you have, you have what it takes to have a career. You should pursue that. And so from eight years on, I started pursuing a career as a professional singer. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think, yeah, like once you're talented in the way that you are, I think that, you know, from an early age, you definitely know it. You definitely know you're special. You definitely know you have a special voice. <laughs> well, I, I think you just know that that's something you have to do. I don't know. I it, it, it's it's very uh, subjective. Some people mm -hmm. like my voice. Other people don't. Mm -hmm. But more do than don't. So I was lucked out there. Yes, I, I think so. I agree. <laughs> And, um, and growing up, did your parents support your career? Yes, they did. But as I said, they wanted me to be a country and pop singer. Mm -hmm. And I decided to pursue classical music. Mm -hmm. So that's what's so wonderful about this show, because uh, they're finally getting their wish, mm -hmm. because this is country and pop music. Oh. And I think they're directing it from heaven. So they oh. made this happen. So oh, beautiful. Oh, definitely. And um, what types of jobs did you take um, while breaking into the music industry, because I know it's, it's, it's very difficult, you know, either way, like it's like whatever genre you're in. Oh, it was rough. Um, I sang, uh, I sang in horrible nightclubs. I call them upholstered sewers. Um, I, I was a funeral singer. To, you have to, you know, make a little money here and there. Um, I also sang in amusement parks where you're dressed up like a character oh, wow. with a big head and whatever oh, wow. <laughs> singing and the kids come over and mm -hmm. kick you in the shins. Mm -hmm. It was very, very glamorous. Yes, I did all those glamorous jobs. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I agree. But it's like, obviously, everything that you have gone through has made you to be, you know, the person that you are now. Well, it, it's a, that those experiences keep you uh, very humble because you're only as good as your last performance. And uh, as and if I get a sore throat, I'm no good at all. Right. <laughs> That's true. Okay. And um, some of um, your mentors um, growing up, like, who would you say really caused like a really big impact in your career basically and motivated you to achieve everything that you have achieved now? Well, that would be my father. He was my mentor and he was my muse, truly. Yeah, so, so beautiful. And um, I understand the show is a musical theater style cabaret with some deep, meaningful messages. And um, tell us more um, about the show, um, anything else that um, 
that's going to surprise us, something that we don't really, we wouldn't really expect to see? Oh, well, I do a lot of dancing. Um, for each of the songs, there's some choreographed, uh, I have had them choreographed, and uh, it's mostly country western, we call it kicker dancing, mm -hmm. and so people aren't uh, used to seeing me do that sort of oh, thing. Wow. And it's a lot of storytelling. I try mm -hmm. to I, I try to uh, pull on my best Mark Twain okay. to to engage yes. the audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's it's I really speak directly to the audience. It's uh, not the, the that fourth wall. I right, mean, right, the right. audience is brought into the show right from the very beginning. I definitely can't wait to see it. So when is it on May 7th? It's on May 7th at 3 p.m. Yeah, at the on. May 7th at 3 p.m. at the Leonard Nimoy Thalia at the Peter Norton's Symphony Space, and that's on Broadway at 95th Street. And you can get tickets at elisabrownmusic.com or go to Symphony Space and under events, my show will be listed there. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much.